just when you think it can't get any worse for the New York Jets, they decide to replace the butt fumble with the fail Mary or the hell Mary, whatever you want to call it. But what a atrocious a turn of events at halftime of that Dolphin game. Um, as always, I'm Pat. This is Ray. Welcome to JetCast. And we're fed up. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I know, Ray, you have your strong opinions on what should happen with the team. But let's get your thoughts on what happens against the Dolphins. I mean, what are you, what are you going to say? We knew we weren't going to beat the Dolphins. I think most Jeff fans gave us a 10% chance. But to think that Tim Boyle is going to come out and be the Mike White of last year is just not realistic. The guy was awful in college. Yeah, he had a good senior year. His first three years, he had like one touchdown and 13 picks. It's just the same thing. It's over and over. It's, you know, we tried out, it's the OC, so we get rid of the OC. It's now it's Hackett. Now it's Rodgers going down. It's Douglas can't draft anybody outside of one draft. It just seems to be the same snowball that's still running downhill over and over again. And it got capped off. This season came to a full close for me, that last pass going into halftime. It's just like, that is so jetsy. And first of all, who the hell thought that Tim Boyle could even reach the end zone? It's not like he has a cannon. As they're lining up, I said, please tell me they're not throwing a Hail Mary. Not thinking it was going to get a pick six, but my first thought is, this guy can't reach the end zone. And what... He doesn't not only reach the end zone, he throws a 99-yard pick six. It's just you can't make this stuff up when it comes to this franchise. You know, the offense is just putrid. I did some uh, All-22 <clears throat> film reviews. You guys can see that on the Shorts feed or on Instagram. And if it's not Hackett calling a bad play, it's Tim Boyle staring down a receiver, or it's the offensive line breaking down. So there's just nothing Absolutely nothing going right on the offensive side of the ball. And yeah, to the fans out there that thought that Tim Boyle was going to be Mike White 2.0, I'm sorry. There there was just no no chance of that. Mike White got a, what, $12 million contract from Miami to back, uh, to back up Tua? Because Mike McDaniel said, you know what? I have a great quarterback who is injury prone. Let's be honest, he was injury prone. I need a legitimate backup that can handle the offense and move the team forward. The Dolphins did that, the Jets didn't, and here we are. It's it's mind-boggling. And no one's head is going to roll. No no That's one's head's going to roll. That's the most upsetting part. But, you know, I can I can understand it because you're going to run it back with Aaron Rodgers next year. You're going to do you're going to try it again. We never saw Aaron Rodgers in this offense. We never saw Aaron Rodgers play as a Jet. So you can't – Aaron Rodgers is going to be here. If you cut him or if he retires, the dead cap just cripples the team for the next two years. He's going to be here. He's going to play for the Jets. Would you rather him play and be angry at the fact that the whole reason why he came here, from his words, Robert Sala and Nathaniel Hackett, are not here? Or would you rather him be here – and be happy to be here and be happy to play for the Jets. I would rather him be here and still want to be here and be motivated to play. So I understand there's fans out there that want Joe Douglas fired, that want Robert Sala fired, that want Hackett fired. I get it, but it's not going to happen unless there is a complete failure next year of not even making the playoffs. Then I can see that happening, but it's not going to happen this year. It is it is not the coaching it's not the fault of the coaches that Aaron Rodgers blew his Achilles. It just isn't. So right. the idea... But it's the fault of Joe Douglas for having Zach... Will- that, Pat, it all goes back to that. I mean, think about this. We gave Alan Lazard the most guaranteed money of any free agent receiver this past offseason. And he's being disciplined. He was a healthy scratch on Friday. That is unacceptable. Even Salah saying, well, we know he's going to be here another year and a half. He signed a four-year deal. Salah already knows he's out the door after next year. This is the- I'm telling you, for Jeff fans who think, and you could bookmark this, if you think that Aaron Rodgers is going to come in here and magically flip a switch and turn this 
league's worst offense into a top 10 offense and we're going to go on a magical Super Bowl run, I got another thing coming to you. We are so deficient in so many other areas. I can't blame Joe Douglas for the offensive line. You're missing your right guard. Your left tackle goes down. You're moving your right tackle to left tackle. You're putting in Max Mitchell at right tackle. Your center blows out his knee or Achilles, and you're put, you're playing a rookie who's never played before. I get all of that. We are so, like, fundamentally deficient. Our coaching is god-awful, and that's not going to change. And for the Jeff fans who are coming here saying, well, look at Salah's defense. I don't want to hear about Salah's defense. Salah says over and over again he's the CEO of this team. He's not the defensive coordinator. He doesn't call the plays. That's Jeff Ulbrich. He doesn't call the offense. He's responsible for everything as a whole. So when the offense fails, that's on him just as much as when the defense is great, that's on him. And that's what's so sad is now we're going to start holding players accountable. I just, oh, my God. As Joey and Clark says, the pain, bro, it's not going to change. It's well, they just had, not going they had to. to. Start, they had to start – they had to start holding players accountable. They had to start holding the quarterback accountable because they were letting go of Michael Carter and they were sitting down Alan Lazard. I think, and and you can agree uh, disagree with me on this, but I think the offense looks completely different with another uh, sure hands receiver and a tackle who stays healthy. I think the offense is completely different. I think next year the core, at least the middle of the offensive line, is kind of set with Tomlinson, Tipman, and AVT, as long as AVT is healthy. You go get you go get at least one more tackle and f- get me another wide receiver that can actually catch the ball. And, yeah, I think Aaron Rodgers can, can do some things with this offense. Now, Don't go get Devontae Adams. That'd be the worst mistake this GM can make is give up a first-round pick for Devontae Adams. We're not, I don't think we're allowed to touch our first round this year. Because it's still well, tied up technically with with the Aaron Rodgers. I, I, don't think think they, they, I don't think they can move it. I think they can excel that some way. I was reading about that. Um, I think the season's concluded and they're locked in at that spot. I think they can. Hmm. All right, well, can't we will see. Them, but but I, I, I also agree. I, I'd rather not um, get Devontae Adams and pay a truckload for him. Um, I think they can find... They don't need a Devontae Adams. They just need someone who can catch the ball at a better than 20% drop rate like Alan Lazard. They just gave Alan Lazard, though, 20 to... So Alan Lazard's going to be your third or fourth receiver making $11 million. That's another catastrophic mistake by this GM. Outside of that first, those first two rounds a couple of years ago where he had the three first-round picks in Brees Hall, the last draft had been freaking... Awful. We still have guys like Izzy is still not getting touches. The guy was considered a top five back in last year's draft. We have guys like Dalvin Cook out. Get Dalvin Cook off this team. Let him go. We're not winning anything. Well, we It's time to see what these kids have. I want to see the linebacker out of LSU. I want to see Brownlee get some touches. See what he's about. It looks like he can make a couple of plays here and there. I guess it's time to continue to see what Gibson has. It's This season is done when it comes to playoff chances. You know, it's like uh, these Jeff fans get give false hope. And I got some news for you as we move on to this next game coming up, thinking the Falcons are a cakewalk. The Falcons last week put up 24 against New Orleans. The week before that, they scored 28. The week before that, they scored 25. The week before that, they scored 23. They, they have scored 23 or more points in the last five out of six games. To think that we're just going to roll over the Falcons this week, I, it's not going to happen. I understand they're, they, they're awful at quarterback right now, but they got Drake London. They got B. John Robinson. They have weapons there. Pitts. And to think there's – yeah, Kyle Pitts. This guy's got Hall of Fame talent. To think that our offense is going to move the ball – we haven't done it in six weeks. What's going to change? The only Nothing. chance, the only chance we have with in this Falcons game is to force Ritter into mistakes, which I think the defense can do. I think the, the we did the it last have... week though. We did oh, Tua. How how many uh, how many mistakes do we force Tua into? We don't score, as you say. We don't throw touchdowns. Yeah. No, I get it. 
I get it. Oh, You're gonna have to. So get, the only the only chance you have in a game right now going forward is to force turnovers and hope that you can kick enough field goals to to win the game. That that that's the truth. That's the truth. This offense. You know, we're gonna end up. Super Bowl caliber. I think we're I think we're what um, eighth in the draft rankings right now. Uh, draft number we're we're number eight. Yeah, I think so. so. I I don't think we. We, we, I think we, we clearly are going to stay under top 10. And, um, you know, the idea that Aaron Rodgers is playing again this year is just that, that's, that's out the window now. I think he, we he all know clearly, what's going to happen. Well, he clearly said that the, the Jets being in it when he's right. ready to come back is a factor. And we know that's not going to happen. So we exactly. know Aaron Rodgers ain't going to play this year. And that's fine. Exactly. I'd rather him not play. I you know? totally agree. Why? I'd so rather we can go. Not play. Why? Why risk getting hurt again? Get fully healthy for next year. Get a good draft pick. Of course, the team's not going to tank, but keep your, you know, your top ten draft pick. Get, you know, best player available, whether that's an offensive tackle or a wide. Best player available between offensive tackle and wide receiver. That's where I'm at. I I agree. I look, if it was me, I'm tearing it down. I'm drafting a quarterback. I'm saying Rodgers. You're more than welcome to play next year. We're going to have a quarterback sit behind you. Because here's the deal. If we have a top 10 pick this year, say we're mediocre next year and we're picking in the 20s and then Rodgers walks. We're in that same co- – if you're a drafting high enough, which I think we might be drafting top six, there's a real potential. And there's probably mm-hmm. three quarterbacks that are going to be going top 10 this year. And you're in position. You love one of them. Now, now the other argument is you don't want Douglas drafting a quarterback. I mean, it – Everything is so screwed up right now because how much power Aaron Rodgers holds over this organization. I was Nick Faria had a great report about that today. With he's never seen a player in the NFL have this much control over an organization's future because Rodgers could threaten to retire, and if he does, it's like a forty-two or forty-three million dollar dead cap hit. Something the Jets just couldn't afford. So, you know, they're gonna run it back. And when we fail next year, maybe that'll be when uh, the, the changes finally happen. But it's going to be the same carousel. We might win a, you know, a few extra games next year, but you're relying on a 40-year-old quarterback coming off a torn Achilles to play behind this offensive line, which right now is bottom three in the NFL. So, to me, it doesn't make sense. Bottom three in the NFL for the third year in a row. The pick right. of, of Zach Wilson set us back at least five years. Easily. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Easily. And, they're going to him this year. They're paying him next year and the following year. Five and a half million next year, five and a half million the following year. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, that's not that bad of a cap number no, to take, no. to, to, to pay someone to not be here. Like, I'm fine with it. Whatever it is, just he's, it, the money is better off spent with him not on the team. Um, but, you know, going back to this, to this Falcons game, um, yeah, they have they have weapons. You know, it's it's London, it's Pitts, it's Bijan Robinson, and th- their Achilles heel um, is is Ritter. He's turning the ball over, so that's your only your only chance here. You know, short fields and hopefully a defensive score. That's that's really our, our only hope because this offense is so beyond dreadful. Um, like, like I said, it's 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 either hack it with a with a bad play, or it's. Boyle not reading the defense properly, or it's the offensive line breaking down, especially Xavier Newman. He is the weak link. I have to give props to Titman. I think the the last three weeks he's been rated as the highest rookie center. Yep. So I will take that. He looks like a he looks like a stud right now as long as he can, you know, knock on wood, stay healthy. Um, Carter Warren got into the game against Miami. He was pretty solid. I didn't see anything uh, alarming from him. You know, the defenses that we face attack our right side of the line because of Max Mitchell and Xavier Newman. They can't communicate between each other. Um, They don't listen to the protection calls and act accordingly to those protection calls. And it, 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 it is right now that right side of the line is the Achilles heel, I think, of the entire offense. Um, yep. There is just no time after a, a second read. And it's, it, it's, you know, it's the same story every game. You're going to load the box, you're going to double-team Garrett Wilson, and you're going you're gonna to tell Boyle or Zach or whoever's back there, Trevor Simeon, Uncle Rico, whoever, to beat you. That's, that's the game plan. And it works. 
Robinson it, five over five and a half yards of carry last week. Drake London nine ninety yards. It's just here's the here's the biggest issue, Pat. And we both know this. The other team scores a touchdown. It feels like the game's over. Yeah. Does it not? Yeah. Because it's like because all right, we now know we, need, we can't score. We need three field goals. <laughs> we need three good drives to, to to take the lead. Yeah. We had we had a flash of good offense in three drives in the second half of the Chiefs game. That's mm-hmm. it. We beat the Eagles because we forced Jalen Hurts into four interceptions, four turnovers. Yep. And a brutal, and you're already, a brutal and you're starting, one at the end of the game. You're starting to see the cracks. So a Garner getting fined for the unnecessary roughness. Uh, you know, the bickering is starting to happen. The team is and, fracturing. The the Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson said it themselves. They're trying to push too hard, right? They're trying – every time they touch the ball, they're trying to hit a home run. When the offense does not work like that, Right? Brees Hall is taking a pitch off the right side, and he's already looking to see where he's going to go, and he doesn't even and he fumbles the ball because he can't. He's not watching the ball into his hands. These are fundamental things. The team is, <clears throat> sorry, the skill players are in their heads thinking every time I touch the ball, I have to hit a home run, and that's not how you play football, and that's when mistakes really happen. Yep. So, all right. Well, if you don't have any last thoughts, Ray. Um, uh, we'll we'll see you guys in about a week. Hopefully, I don't think it's going to happen, but hopefully we're talking about a Jets win and maybe we take some positives out of the offense. I, I um, maybe don't. Brownlee will get his first it. touchdown. That's what I want. I want Brownlee. Brownlee to get his I'm first still waiting touchdown. for my Rucker touchdown. Let's 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 start there. Uh, he'll be waiting a while. He's he's the best ta- he's the best tight end we have after the film I've seen. Uh, Tyler, Kyle, Tyler Conklin and C.J. Uzama can't block. They, they might as well not have arms. They might as well be just statues standing there. It, they, they, it's terrible. I had a short where um, Conklin tries to cut block on in the Dolphins game on the first play of the game, and he basically just rolls at the guy's feet. He doesn't even – I understand the purpose of a cut block, but he doesn't in any way – impede the defensive end into the backfield and it's a and it's a two yard loss on the first play of the game when it would have easily been a five or six yard run by Brees Hall like there's 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 a lack of effort there is a lack of intensity from the beginning of the game across the entire offense because they don't think they can do it and they don't think they can do it because they can't do it they can't do it exactly all right thanks for hanging out with us guys hit that subscribe button if you like the video give us a give us a thumbs up we got more content coming and uh we'll talk to you guys soon go jets yeah sure (laughs) go jets